drawings over them. There we go. Got it. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, why don't we go ahead and start the session? Uh, either Eli or David, Stephen, you can um, start. Go ahead and hit the start session button at the top screen. Okay, oh, great. I will hit the that. start session. And we've got a Aretha in as well. Okay, uh, okay. so we can yeah, go ahead and start. Um, Aretha's in as a um, as an attendee. That's good. So now we can butts around with the attendee things. Um, starting soon. Connecting. Da -da -da. Okay, you're on stage. So team, Woo. can I ask that we keep ourselves from going crazy? If you go into your um your AV to like into the air meet and at the bottom mute yourself so you don't have audio coming in from two different places. Yeah. Okay. So um uh, Aretha is our audience member and um Eli and Steven are our um hosts. Um uh let's see Eli why don't you um look at uh the three dots at the bottom of the stage here manage co-host audio video settings um if you wanted to you could make aretha co-host um but you don't uh uh Not you can today. only make people co-hosts in the backstage ah no, which is why it's great out okay. okay so um aretha why don't you yeah go ahead and kill that um okay so um aretha why don't you ask a question um uh, in the Q and A. Um, oh, Eli, you you uh, spotlighted Stephen. Very excited about that. Stephen's a star. Spotlight Stephen. Um, uh, you can also um, you could also hide yourself. Um, okay, so uh, Q and A. Oh, um, kill the people. Um, thing on the side there. There's a, yeah, up there. Go ahead and kill that. Okay, Q&A. Okay, so there's a difference between the chat, the Q&A, polls, raised hands. Um, because your host, you see video, um, the audience doesn't see that. They just see chat, Q&A, polls, and uh, raised hands. So Q and A. Oh, perfect. What time does it start? Okay. So there's a question. You can show the question on stage. Go ahead and hit that button. Ooh. So now the question appears on stage next to the speakers. I know. I actually totally love this feature. I think this is really slick. It is. And, and you can invite the person who asked to the stage. So go ahead and invite Aretha to the stage. Now, Aretha, you should get a little pop-up that says you've been invited to the stage and now she's joined. And now Aretha can um, chitty chat, chitty chat. And um, I think Aretha at the bottom of your screen, there's a little microphone or, okay. So if you drop the mic, you leave the stage. Hmm, okay. Does that make sense? Right. But I, of course, as you can see, also the ability to remove from stage. So I can sort of override, just say like, okay, we're done. Right, yeah, right. Now, um, uh, the audience members do not see these buttons. Mark has answered or removed some stage. These, those buttons don't appear. Oh, look at you. Um, those buttons don't appear to the audience, just the question appears. Um, so if you hand someone the mic, um, uh, uh, and they drop the mic, they disappear. Um, go ahead and remove Aretha from the stage. And um, then let's, um, Amuth, Aretha, why don't you raise your hand? If you go over to raised hands, 
Um, and you can mark this as answered. Mark your question as answered. So we go back to our main. Um, oh, wait, here. Wait, before you do that, before you do that, mark the question on the stage as answered. Got it. Okay, now we're back to that. Um, okay, so raised hands. Aretha has raised her hand. Go ahead and hand her the mic. Now you can remove her or she can drop the mic. Um, Aretha, um, go ahead and drop the mic and just, just so you know what that. Okay. So handing some, someone the mic and then I, I tend to say like, I'm gonna hand you the mic and um, uh, don't drop the mic until you're done with your question. <laughs> right. Cool. I think we'll, we will be cautious around that. I don't know if we'll necessarily use the raised hands feature, but I think the Q and A seems like a good workflow for us to work our way through that. Just so to be really familiar with the questions come here and as they come in, we can feature right. that question and ask that person to come on mic. And if obviously they can't, we'll read out the question. And something and that you want to say um, in the session, I mean, the speaker or the facilitator or whoever it is, um, something to say is, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A, don't put them in the chat, because in the Q&A, the audience can upvote questions. Right. And so those rise to the top. Right, so we're so running a pretty Zoom-like process there, okay. Yeah, so that's something that you really want to express. Um, people are kind of used to doing chat, you know, questions. And um, Stephen and Eli, you guys were really good chat moderators um, uh, and, you know, really got the, you know, whole difference between chat and Q&A. Um, but I think saying it out loud is a really good thing to do. And, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, putting it in the chat and then hitting the poll or hitting the um, pin, you know, so, you know. so here it is. So I see we can show that on stage as a chat as well, but also we can pin it. Okay, so that would right. get to the top. Right. That sounds so, great. And so I'm making a note team that I'll be putting a slide into the standard deck with that reiteration around that Q and A is the right place to put things. Yeah, put put questions in the Q and A, um, you know, and you know, conversation goes in chat. Um, uh, so the other thing to know is um, right at the top, pause session, end session. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, pause is really if you have a session where you're going to do a breakout right. and then come back. We'll only have one of those sessions. I will be hosting that session on the third day. So you don't need to worry too much about that around the pause. Yeah, but that, I mean, so if you pause, it shoots everyone out into the lounge. And then when you unpause the session, it sucks everyone back into the room. Um, and then um, obviously end session ends the session for real, for real. Um, do you have, um, is anybody doing like PowerPoints or anything? Uh, almost all I would imagine are going to be doing some screen share. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so screen sharing, um, you know, it basically works the same. Um, it does kind of help to do, um, to have them share a PDF. Um, it runs a little bit faster than a PowerPoint. Um, and you know it's yeah you could do entire or chrome tab um i mean it's not it's not you know terrible um slow um now see we're seeing your whole thing um what i would recommend is putting it into present mode on a second monitor. Ah, right. Now, not everybody has a second monitor. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you can do is the hosts, if you get their presentation in advance, they can, you know, the host can 
um, share it as opposed to the presenter. Right. I mean, it's, so what you're saying, so I was in present mode, but what you're saying is you're still seeing like the browser top Chrome is all, right. all there. Exactly. Right. Totally. And uh, that's good to know. And if they share as a PDF, that would not be the case then? Right. So, so if they have two monitors, then they won't run into this problem because if right. they're in presenter mode and they only have one monitor, then their air meet right. disappears. And so that's hard, you know? So if they have two monitors, not a problem. Right. If they only have one monitor, if they share a PDF, then their air meet doesn't disappear. Cool. That's going to be my recommendation then. I think I don't want to support multiple monitors and trying to train people up on that in the course of the event. But if we then as hosts use PDF as the, the format we use and sort of export those out, then that's how we can manage it. Because I think like our other events, we will get, try and get the slides ahead of time and do the advancing. And if not, I'll be giving P, PDF as a preferred format. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yep. 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 Um, Let's see what else is so important about. So quick question then about video. So I've basically been telling people don't because it never works <laughs> as you expect it to. But if there is a video that comes in, because I think there will be one or two because this is a video focused event, do I just sort of go upload those videos ahead of time and they'll show up here? Like how yes. does that process work? Yes, um, I would upload the videos, you know, um, no later than an hour before, mm -hmm. you know, just because, you know, video rendering is a pain in the ass. Totally. So um, these are not YouTube links. These would be an actual video files with, is what would be needed. MP4s. Yeah. And it's, and if you go, um, uh, go ahead and pause your session. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the back end. Got it. Paused. Um, Okay, so um, it go ahead and um, click back or, or the AB session link. Mm -hmm. There you go. And um, yes, I want to leave backstage. Um, and then um, what you want to do is let's see, schedule. Go to uh, just, uh, you want to do is. Pause the air meet. Actually, go to the air meet logo and let's see if it um, if it'll take you back to the back end. No, that won't work. So I, or actually, you, you, you could put it in your, your community dashboard. You have the tab open. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So just jump over here. Okay. So that's what I want to know. So videos, so the recordings, yeah. all this is not at the event level, but across all the events is. So it's at sort of the the root level basically. Right. So yeah, you um, uh, if you have the video ends up in the video library, mm -hmm. like for instance, if you clicked on video library, you'd see all the um, videos that we uploaded in um, for yeah. Got it. That's that. This like all of our videos from the summit. Okay. So Great. that's in the video library. So just know. Um, what I would do is um, if you upload videos, put some indicator the, the, in the title. Yeah, you know? I'm gonna put, yeah, light camera. I'm going to LCTA. I'm going to do for all of them. Thank you. That's video. Bye, Rita. Ciao, ciao. Nomenclature. Ciao, ciao. Common naming. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, so just, um, you know, because you, you don't want to, you don't want to like, scroll through all of our so what if i want so i think this is i think we covered by most of my core questions here the next big question really is around so i've got all these people in an event is there a way for me to message all of my members in platform or do i need to export them into another space yeah 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 um uh uh Yes, you can. Um, I mean, uh, if you go to participants, I mean, uh, you're not going to see any participants here because. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you could 
you can message them all, you could download the list, you can export it into whatever. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Um, there it is. Sorry. Whoop. So I'm in here. I enter that event. Very exciting. Check, 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 check. Um, actually, I want to be in. I don't want to be there. I want to be in the back end of this. So, brain, too many tabs. So go into this event, awesome. So I go into something that actually does have a whole bunch of people. So let's go into the upcoming event with its 800 and something people, view details. So I pop into here, go into entry participants, click participants, all kinds of people a year. So if I wanted to, so what can I do with these people? Can you just guide me through this? Um. Copy magic link. I have no idea what a magic link is. I have no oh, idea. Probably some kind of login uh, something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, download list. That's your that's your best. That's your outro. Yeah. Basically, so what I should really do is download the list, upload them to a HubSpot list, and do use that as my messaging with like reminders the day of the event and stuff like that. I mean, you can you can integrate with HubSpot. There's an integration thing. But I haven't got Nick to get back to me on that one, but yes, I am trying to explore that route. Yeah, I mean, um, I think it's pretty easy. You just have to get the API key. Exactly, I think I don't have myself, but I'll see if I can get his attention in the next week or so. If yeah, not, I mean, I'll take the manual approach. Yeah, whatever. I mean, we took the manual approach too. Yeah. We didn't We didn't integrate with HubSpot. We were like... Good, but that's the confirmation I need, which is I don't have built-in reminders and transactional emails in the platform, all, all that kind of messaging needs to happen off platform. Yeah. Okay, got it. And um, although when you're when the event is live, then you have broadcast. Set up um, little, you know, like set up your messages ahead of time. Um, so oh yeah, sorry. That could you just walk me through those those messages? How would that happen? Um, let's go back to the live, and you can kind of see what it's what it looks looks like. Yeah. Um. Uh. Go to basic info, and oh yeah, there you go. Just get myself into the event. So um. It's right at the top. So there's a there's a there's a couple different. So there's the feed, mm -hmm. um, and then there's alerts. So the feed, anybody can, you know, it's like everybody can chit chat. Right. Um, uh, then alerts is like, it pops up on people's screen, right. like, right. hey, this session is starting, right. you know, or meet and us just in to the make lounge. the distinction or, clear for myself, so you have an, an in-session specific chat, but this is sort of a cross all sessions, like yeah. sort of outside of that space. Okay, got it. Yeah, and only hosts have, you know, alert capabilities. Okay. You know, bye, Nicole. Um, so that is the, you know, so yes, you can, So add an action, what that is, is it's telling people to go somewhere. Yeah, it's adding sort of a call to action link, whether that's external, go to the lounge now. Or go to a session. Yeah, cool. So, so um, because a B test session is the only session you have, right. but um, go to the lounge, lounge, go to the lounge, okay. um, and then go to lounge, there Great. you go. Got it. Cool, so yeah, that's the way to sort of get people in and out of session saying, hey, we're about to start up, especially well, for this. Sorry, go ahead. There will be um, there will be an automatic one of those. Mm -hmm. um, when sessions start, it, there will be a pop up that says this session is starting now, you right. know, um, and with the same thing. Mm -hmm. So the announcements will also 
um, have that, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, on your on your main air meet on the real one, um, how mm -hmm. many tables do you have set up in the? Fewer, I believe. I think I set it to four because it had a total cap. I'm sure I'm going to want to create some more, but I think the okay. actual create, event has got. Go ahead. Create those before you start the air meet. Right. Because once you start the air meet, maybe you can add tables, but you can't subtract them. I can't. Yeah, remember. I know there's like you can't subtract. I think you can add, but yeah, I'll make sure all that's done before we start. Yeah. And okay. you can also change the table names. Yes. Cool. Yeah, which is again something I'm, I'm going to discuss with my my session lead for that. That sounds good. Um, perfect. So I think I think I'm in a pretty good place. Um, I'll need to start prepping for my next meeting in a moment. Any other key thing we want to touch before we wrap this? Stephen, do you have any questions? You've been around this block. Yeah, I think we should. I should be good. I, I think I just want to play around with it myself, just to familiarize myself um, okay. with yeah. it all. But yeah, this was a great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just reminder. don't start the main air meet. Yes. Don't end the main air meet. And basically, that. I've just been taking each one of my presenters in in my one on one call with them into the back end of their session into like the, the green room to make sure they know how to find it, know how to get their way in there, test their uh, screen share, um, just make sure that that's all running. So they should all, at a technical level, all my presenters should walk into the event with at least the ability to successfully log into air. Yeah, and and the the thing is is that your speakers have been mapped to their sessions, mm -hmm. so really they won't have any problem getting into their session. They should only they have the one link exactly. In. Yeah, yeah, and and you don't have like these multiple tracks and all of that crap. So no, the only that we don't have any of that. The only thing I just need to actually guidance wise is actually there's one thing I would love to get your advice on. Uh, schedule here. So I'm going to have this one session where it's going to sort of be an opening keynote and then probably go into another session like immediately. Um, and I'm not sure if I should make those into one session or whether they should be the two. I would make them into one session because any break you have loses people. Yeah. That sounds reasonable because yeah, they'll have to leave that that session and go into another space. Okay, good. And, All and, and, and literally, once you have them in the room, you just got to hold them. Now, um, I just want to, um, I just want to warn you, though, mm -hmm. with the keynote, if you need the keynote presenter to leave the stage before the next thing, is that a true statement? Uh, it would be two different presenters. So yes, I would not want my initial person to be there the whole time. That's right. Okay. Then you might want to have two different ones because if you've already mapped the speaker yeah. to the stage. Right. So maybe we will keep them as two different sessions. before you change this. Because the, the thing is, is that that like the speaker mapping to the stage. And this was, so what we did for the, the summit, and I just want to tell you this really quick. Mm -hmm. What we did is we set up the speakers with fake email addresses so that they weren't actually mapped to the session. And, and we had them enter the session and then we pulled them out of the audience and made them a speaker. It was Ugh. complicated. I, I do not want to do that. No, thank yeah. you. So just make it, just have it be two separate sessions. Yeah, got it. I'll keep that. And also because it may well move. I just had, as you see, a giant break here because someone just pulled out last yesterday. So I, I've got to fill something. Anyways, this is really helpful. Thank you. I think just let me know if you have any, any questions. That sounds great. Anytime. And basically the moment you've got the ability to confirm whether we can go over those tickets because there's a couple more emails coming at us. And so I know we're likely to come at the uh, hit the cap pretty quick. Jerry, Jerry just signed the contract for the extra registration. Okay. So um, hopefully I will, um, I'll, I'll, I'll message Manesh, who is our okay. contact there and just be like, hey, you know, extender, extender 
registrations. Great. And that'd be one other thing I'd love is as we come up to the event, to just get a quick intro to your lead contact, especially if you won't be around for say day two and three, just yeah, yeah. I've got someone um, I can call, reach out to. Maybe what I'll do is let's have another meeting where um, where I show you the, their help desk back end. Totally. How far out, when do you want that? Maybe just a week before the event, something like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, anytime. I mean, my schedule is less insane than yours. Just find time on my calendar. Good. I'm holding some time actually on this Monday. It's just not happening. Okay, good. Yeah, I'll get that into the calendar. Perfect. Thank you so much. Super All appreciated right. taking us through this. Um, we'll uh, we'll keep kicking at it, and uh, off we go. And, and once we learn how to use this platform, TechSoup will adopt it something new. <laughs> Bye. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Thank you all.